Hi guys, it's Alan from Finance Fix. There's a lot of talk out there about approaching budgeting with a 50, 30, 20 mindset. Have you heard of that? Right, so it's a new idea. Okay. So 50, 30, 20 is about budgeting in a 50%, 30% and 20% way. So the idea is 50% goes on your essentials, your rent, your mortgage, your utilities, food, groceries, that sort of thing. 30% on your wants and desires and 20% on savings and investments. Now, whilst this sounds quite simple, and there is, I should say, recognition out there that 50, 30, 20 doesn't necessarily work for everyone, and that you need to tailor it to your own personal circumstances, the wide messaging around 50, 30, 20 is probably likely to result in people just adopting it as is. The headline sounds great. Let's apply a simple rule of thumb and 50%, 30%, 20% and done. I'm on my way to wealth. But no. What do you mean no? I really think this is ineffective, troublesome, and worrying in a number of ways. It's so wrong. Now this also might sound like such a small thing, but I think psychologically, yeah, it can make a huge impact for people. Firstly, in 50, 30, 20, savings and investments comes last in that 20%. And I hate that. For me, that 20% is the most important part. And in my world, the most important part comes first. What else do you care about that in priority order that you put last? I mean, think about other areas of your life. Do you ever put the most important thing, the most, the thing that you care most about last? I bet you don't. Do you? Of course not. And nor should you with your money. Your priority, your savings and investments, the path to real wealth should come first. There's no other way. And I'm not talking just semantics here. I'm not talking about 50, 30, 20 becoming 20, 50, 30 or anything like that, just semantics. I'm talking about making sure that payment, that 20% payment, if that's what you buy into, that 20% coming first. So getting the savings and investments number allocated first, paid first, and dealing with the essentials, the needs and the wants with the remainder. Thinking about savings and investments last just doesn't work. Does not work. If your aim is to build wealth consciously and not just by accident, then you need to really focus on that 20%. You need to really focus on, actually forget the percentage, you need to focus on savings and investments first and deal with what you need to spend on with what's left after that. If instead you focus on spending first and only saving and investing what's remaining, then I think you're going about it the wrong way. Because don't forget, savings and investments, that 20% in this 50, 30, 20 rule means a lot of things. That savings and investment pot contains your emergency or contingency fund. It contains your investments that you put into an investment portfolio. It could include other things that you decide to invest in that will compound and grow over the medium and long term, leading to long term wealth. It seems to me that if you're the type of person that is serious about building wealth, serious about taking control of your money, serious about getting on that journey towards financial freedom, and not the type of person that thinks that things happen to them, that money things happen to them, that negative money things happen to them, then you may want to consciously choose how much of your net income you allocate to savings and investments first, rather than allocate what's left after essentials, and especially after wants and desires. Why the hell would you want to cut your investment cloth after your spending? Cut your spending cloth after your investments are taken care of. That is the better way. Much better. Essentially what I'm saying is, Figure out your spending on what's left after your savings and investments are taken care of. Your savings and investments goals, not anyone else's, not some crazy rule of thumb, the goals that you set for yourself to get on that journey to financial freedom. Allocating a set percentage to essentials and allocating a set percentage to wants, I think can make people lazy. If your essentials of mortgage, rent, groceries, utilities, communication and travel are say at 45% of your net income, does that mean that under this rule of thumb, this 50, 30, 20, that you're doing well? Not necessarily, but if you feel like you're under this arbitrary 50% of your net income that goes into the essentials bucket, if you think you're under that, then you might think you're doing well and that you don't need to consider those expenses or look at those expenses carefully any longer. But whether your essentials number or your wants number is below or under this arbitrary 50% or 30% target is actually the wrong question. The questions are wrong. What's the right question? It doesn't matter if your essential spending is under 50% or over 50% of your net income. It doesn't matter if this arbitrary target is being met or not. It matters whether your future goals are being met. If you've decided that you want to grow your wealth by investing your hard-earned money, get it working for you, investing regularly, building your portfolio of investments, then clearly that is the target for you. 
then clearly that should be your number one target, not how much you spend on essentials or wants. That makes sense. For a lot of us, and probably you if you're watching this video, your biggest desire financially, economically, is to achieve financial freedom, to achieve some level of wealth that puts money under your control rather than having it control you. Then why concentrate on essentials first? Why, even crazier, should you concentrate on your wants first? It just doesn't make sense. You are a genius. <laughs> For me, savings and investments is my number one priority. Paying myself first is my number one priority when I allocate my income and decide what I do with it. For me, that tops my agenda. I decide on that number first and allocate that first and then deal with whatever else I need to spend on thereafter. And I'm not saying here, set your target for savings and investments at say 5,000 pounds, especially if you're bringing in say 2,000 pounds. That's a bit loopy. Be realistic, but also be ambitious. And yes, it's possible to be both at the same time. I set my target for savings and investments at 25% of my net income. It is a percentage because my income fluctuates over time. Then I cut the rest of my spending depending on what's left. If that means I need to renegotiate on stuff, I'll do that. If that means I need to wait a little bit longer before I can buy the thing I want to buy, then I'll do that too. Hell, if that means I need to move to a cheaper place to live, then I'll even consider doing that. I dedicate most of my time to increasing my income. Now, this is just about how you allocate the income that you've got coming in. I dedicate most of my time to increasing my income, figuring out ways to supplement it with side hustles, getting bigger and better clients, switching to investments with bigger returns, etc, etc. But whichever way things go, whatever changes I need to make to my life, my spending habits, etc. However my life changes day to day, month to month, year to year, and in the future, I know that my future, my freedom fund as I like to call it, is always on track. That is always being allocated the set percentage, no matter how my income fluctuates, no matter how my business income fluctuates, that percentage is on track and pointing in the right direction. I'm satisfied that's the case. Whatever decisions I make in changing other aspects of my spending is irrelevant because my freedom fund is on track. Those other changes can take their own course. My freedom fund doesn't change. The percentage I allocate to it doesn't change either. Lesson learned. Anyway, that's my bit on the 50-30-20 rule. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll see you on the next one.